Hey there, no penguin here. Our prophet has returned, and you know what that means? Banless season. And I'm all here for that. The format is what I have grown so bored of. Deck building just feels bad because I either auto include these really powerful options that will completely dictate how I end my boards on, or I consciously forego these options and get dunked on by everyone who did include them. That being said, here's what I think we should see on the upcoming list. Quick note, the philosophy behind my decisions is based on my belief that a more diverse meta is healthier than one with a dominant strategy or boss. With that in mind, expect some out there picks, but I will do my best to justify them. With that, let's start off with the cards that need to be banned. Cards that I am just sick of seeing. To start us off, let's go with the card that should not even have been in this format, Scythe. Scythelock is just not fun. If you don't have droplets called by the grave or just anything that can stop it, you literally just can't play that turn. Either way, this card is one that should have been hit long ago and I truly hope that this one happens. Okay, so this is one of those picks that some may not agree with, but I have to say it. Mystic Mine needs to go. This card is the most unfun card to have to deal with. If you do not main Cyclone, you lose the duel. The issue isn't even with pure mind builds, it's the fact that decks can play just one copy to stall the game until they have the resources to remove mine and absolutely go off. This may just be a personal pick, but god do I hate this card. Next we have Fusion Destiny. The fact that this card would still see play even if we ban Verte is a problem. That's just something you cannot say about other Verte targets, except for Branded Fusion that is. And of course, getting to draw 2 from its material is insane. Alternatively, we could also hit Verte itself. The issue is if we banish Fusion Destiny but not Verte, then Branded has almost exclusive use of this card to dump whatever they want from their deck. Frankly, I think we need both of these to go. Ugh, this one hurts. But it's only fair. The Hulk into a Wardong combo has been part of combo decks for several formats now, but with the inclusion of Cupid Pitch, they are now stronger than they have been in ages. While not as dominant as the DPE stuff, I still think it's worth mentioning. I believe this to be the correct thing to hit in the combo, if you're gonna hit something at all. But I'm begging you, Konami, please don't hit this. Now, let's move on to cards that need to be limited, starting us off with the most unlikely pick in this entire video, Branded. Fusion. This card is insane. At 3 makes Branded far too hard to handle, especially since their effects cannot be ashed due to Branded Lost. Fuck this card, this is also a card I want gone. Again, very unlikely since they just released the structure deck, but I feel like Branded might be too powerful if we end up nerfing everything except for Branded, so I feel like we need to at least hit something. Maybe not Branded Fusion, but something needs to be hit. Speaking of the things everywhere else in the format, we have Rite of Armaseer. I don't even have to say anything. Most decks nowadays are playing the adventure engine, and for very good reason. Now this hit won't stop people from doing so, but it will at least reduce the consistency of it. Hopefully enough to the point where it isn't an auto include in literally everything. Skill Drain! And for the semi-limits... What, you thought I was done hitting the adventure engine? The fact that Priestess can grab the right from the grave makes the limit to it somewhat uneventful, and I think hitting both in some capacity is the correct move. Whether this be at 1 and that be at 2 or the vice versa, I just feel like they both need to be hit in some capacity. Again, I do not want to fully kill it, I don't want to ban any of these cards. Now enough about the boring obvious stuff, let's talk about the cards I think can come off. Starting us off, we have Blaster. I feel like it's well enough time to bring another ruler off, and Blaster is easily the safest one to come off. Though, personally I really want title, but that's just me. I think Blaster is absolutely going to not cause an issue. Okay, time for the controversial picks. I think that we can bring Harp Horror back. I just don't see them becoming a tier 1 deck. The fact that Harp Horror Dark Oxu is very restrictive, especially in a format without Verte. I am very confident on this stats, but some of you may not agree. If you don't, let me know. Now for one I'm a little less confident on, but I still believe Masterpiece. Making an unaffected monster is scary. Giving that monster a quick effect pop is even more scary. But the fact that it doesn't even have 3000 attack is just sad. With how easy access code is to make, not to mention cards like Mirror Jade, Eldritch, Battle Butler, Barone, and so many other easy to get up monsters, all those monsters beat over it and have no problem dealing with it. All you need to do is bait out the one pop it has, which any of the decks who can make these cards are more than capable of shrugging off. 
one masterpiece will be absolutely fine. Tell me I'm wrong. Look, Treff is just built differently, and when the deck has exactly one player who can actually use it, I think it needs a boost. Alright, now this is the card I am most unsure of. It almost didn't make the list, but I figured I would toy with the idea of this coming back. Colossus. Colossus is such a house. Even at 1, I feel like it would revive Thunder Dragon into a top deck. The fact that it is a floodgate on legs that can protect itself is insane. All of that being said, with the changes made to the list, I feel like this kind of deck will be needed to rival the unhit branded. Maybe I'm overestimated branded's dominance in a post DPE meta. Absolutely possible. I just feel like there needs to be a card to shake up a potential dominant meta. This would be the card. I'm gonna interrupt this video by saying that this no penguin has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. So as I was rendering this video, I was talking to a friend about my changes to the list and they brought up the very obvious thing that I completely missed. Branded can just run Thunder Dragon. Now I know this might just seem obvious, but that little realization did not stick in at all until that moment. I was just looking at it at a Thunder Dragon deck standpoint of things, not the fact that you could then make branded Thunder Dragons and that would most likely be the most dominant deck without question. The more he talked about it and just sort of broke down how the two engines work together so fabulously well, I just saw, holy shit, I was so wrong. Now I thought bringing it off was a little much, but honestly, I had no idea. This was a huge miscalculation on my part, so everything that this No Penguin has said for the last few minutes, no. Bad no penguin. Bad. This card needs to stay banned. Miscellaneous Saurus. I really think that dinos can use the boost. I don't see this being a problem at top tables. Maybe more so on the locals level. Gazelle to 2. Now while I was writing this, Salomon Great actually got a top at YCS Guadalajara. So maybe this is unwise, but at the same time, it's one top at one YCS. I still think that bringing it to 2 isn't going to break the deck. Engage, baby. Sky Striker has more or less fallen off the map. Some people may see that as a good thing. I am not one of those people. This is another one of those picks that's rooted in the fact that I would like to see a lot of powerful decks as opposed to just a couple. At least at two, Engage will have a less chance of being banished off Desires, which is always good. Come at me if you'd like, we stand right here. Now we move on to the cards that can go all the way to three copies. Spellbook of Judgment. I don't know what Konami is thinking keeping this off the ban list. This card is Mondo shit. If you can go through a whole turn and then add six spellbook cards to your hand, be my guest! They're spellbook cards! Oh, but spellbook of fake and non targeting banish! You know what else can non targeting banish? Mirror Jade. And you don't have to play a dog shit deck to do it. And guess what? If you're adding it during the end phase, you're not setting it for your opponent's turn! The only counter argument I see is if you're scared Konami is going to print some broken spellbook support that's going to make this so much better. But Konami hasn't printed any spellbook support in 5 years. And it's not even a good card by today's standards. I will fight this stance to the death. I genuinely think we can bring this back to 3 and have literally no problem. Here's an alternate unbanned to Electromite, Astrograph Sorcerer. Cyberstein! What is the combo? What, what is the combo? Is Am I missing something? Is there like some FDK that Cyberstein is going to enable that's going to be mo super specific and super consistent? Like, just bring it back to three. This card has been at one for over a decade. And as long as Launcher stays at one, we can easily bring Archfiend back. The fact that you have to play the deck with no cards in hand, which means you can't play hand traps, by the way, makes it a really bad deck, no matter how many Archfiends we have. Now, I'm fully expecting Archfiend players to make a really cool combo deck with this, but the fact that you can't play Hand Traps, except maybe Infib, it'll be a rogue pick at best, but a really based rogue pick. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the dangers suck. They were good at their time, but that time has passed. So unless we're scared of Dark Worlds, I think we could bring this back to 3 easily. Both of them. Sekka's Light. I fail to see even a single top deck that would forego their entire spell trap lineup just to play Sekka's Light. This is going to be a card that's going to be exclusively used by rogue strategies. It is a very powerful card, but it is not powerful enough to forego spells and traps for about 95% of decks. 
Hell, last time I mentioned this card could be used in Super Heavy Samurais, I had all the Super Heavy Samurais players comment that this does not work in Super Heavy Samurai, because the cards cannot use their equip card effects. So at that point, who's even playing Sekka's Light anymore? I'll tell you who, Janky Dex. And Janky Dex deserve a little love. Hero lives to 3 every day, all day. It not only pays half your life points, which in a game 3 state literally loses you the duel, but Hero really doesn't have that good of a going for his board at the moment. Until we get better end bosses, Hero Live a 3 is perfectly fine. And that is the end of the bands. Now, if all of these go into effect, this is what the band list would look like. 5 band cards, 7 limit cards, 5 semi limit cards, and 7 cards that could come off the list completely. You may think this is too much, you may think it's not enough. Either way, I'd like to hear what you think in the comments. But with that, like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more. This is No Penguin, signing out.